Welcome! We have a new video. It's an iPhone 12 Pro Max and it's boot looping and it's currently in recovery mode. I use the Apple Devices program to check if I can uh, update it or restore it, but that didn't work. It failed for error 4013. Pretty common error if you Google it. <clears throat> There's a lot of different programs that you they'll try to sell you to, in order to fix this but usually this is a hardware issue so let's start by opening the phone so Apple devices have or phones have these two screws, screws next to the charging port and those are removed then I will use uh, this kind of warm bag or heated bag it has some grains or something in it and I put it in the microwave for five minutes it's warm enough so I put it on the phone for about 10 minutes after that I'll take an opening tool with uh, two suction cups on the both sides this will help you pry open the screen be careful at this point because the screen will break easily if you try to force it too much I will use isopropyl alcohol to dab to the seams of the phone so that the isopropyl alcohol will soften up the adhesive there so it will be easily to open it up once you got it crack open be very careful because there is an extra ribbon wire on the top portion of the screen where the proximity sensor is connected that will break very easily if you try to force it too hard open i use this kind of plastic card to pry open or cut the adhesive seam so that I can open it. Then you can also dab in some more isopropyl alcohol that will again soften up the glue and you can open the phone. So iPhones have this uh, adhesive uh, seam on it or sticker or glue what's put in them so that they are waterproof and dust free. So, <clears throat> but once you have opened this phone once, you cannot get it watertight again. So you can forget that and just live with it. Okay, now we have the screen open. So this particular phone had one of the most common issues with this uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max series uh, that uh, the proximity sensor is broken and that causes the boot loop and causes the phone not to boot up so what we start by removing the brackets that hold together the screen cable and the battery it's always very important that before you detach anything or attach any cables to the circuit board you must remove the battery connector because if the battery connector is uh, on the motherboard, once you attach the screen cable, it will break your screen and that's it. So every time work on your phone without the battery connected. This is a very important device. So if you try to fix your own devices, remember this always. And this applies to every kind of devices Android phones, uh, tablets, uh, laptops, every kind of devices that have battery in it. Now we'll remove the bracket holding up the Face ID flex cable. And also remember always that Apple devices especially have different sizes of screws. If you put the long length of screw anywhere or the wrong screw to some wrong place, it will probably break your phone, motherboard, damage the circuit board, damage something and you will not be able to be fixed. You, will, you cannot fix it. So uh, use some kind of container that you can put those screws in the right order so that you know where it goes. And there will be lots of screws. Now removing the screen cable and the proximity cable.
right let's start by removing the proximity sensor so it comes it comes in a module uh, that contains the speaker uh, proximity sensor light sensor and also <clears throat> When you replace this with a spare part or aftermarket part, uh, you will lose the face ID. There is a way to keep the face ID that involves by swapping out the small chip that you can see next to the uh, LED there. You can swap it, but in this particular case it was not a big issue since the owner of the phone didn't mind tapping in the uh, passcode to access the phone and they didn't really need the face ID to be able to be used. So this is something to keep in mind. There is a way, there is a lot of videos on how to keep, change the proximity sensor or the speaker uh, by keeping uh, the chip. If you need to change the speaker for example, you can just swap the speaker, uh, keeping the old flex cable bus desoldering it speaker from that okay uh, be careful when you're doing this when you're putting it back together it took me a pretty long time to put it there because it's a very small part and the holes that the sensor need to go are very tight and just take your time and be patient there's no rush in this otherwise you will damage the part or break it a new one. In my country the replacement module uh, cost about 24 euros so that's not expensive and if you think about it this particular phone was taken to an Apple shop or Apple repair shop and they said that it is unfixable and you cannot get it working and you cannot restore it. So basically they told them to buy a new phone and it is a bit wasteful if you think 24 euro part, some labor, it didn't take that long and it's not that hard to do. If you have done something with electronics, just need a few tools and off we go. So if you think about it, it's a very expensive phone still even though it's used already and it's fairly old but still apple products hold their price very well so it would be a shame to throw away this nice phone just because one small component probably costing a few cents breaking and what i have found out by researching this issue was that the common fault for this is that moisture builds up in the proximity sensor and it sorts, uh, sorts the pin out at, with the chip <coughs> uh, causing it to short circuit that then there goes one I believe there was one video where the, somebody showed from the diagram the schematics of the motherboard that it goes to one particular pin that causes if it's shorted it causes the boot loop of the phone and it does not permit you to start the phone and this particular issue is pretty common for uh, iPhone X iPhone 11 iPhone 12 phones I didn't find much uh, cases uh, concerning iPhone 13 maybe they fixed that problem already with that model usually it takes a few models for Apple to fix common issues with these phones and the uh, adhesive tape that I used is a uh, double-sided tape nothing special purchased from some hobby store or something like that <clears throat> just to keep it in place so there are the screws that will keep it in place but Apple had it why not so it doesn't hurt it keeps the proximity sensor located and it's okay and there that there is that metal slip there that keeps it anyways in place okay now the module have been swapped 
I will just clean some adhesive that was sticking on the screen. Now I will clean the phone or the back plate of it. There is still the original adhesive there. Peel it off. Usually if you use isopropyl alcohol there, it will soften up the adhesive just enough for you to get the end going and then it will just peel off. So again, be patient, make it good. Since I will not be using those stickers, um, Apple, there is uh, spare parts to this that uh, you get at the uh, sticker or the ad adhesive in um, plastic uh, cover that you just align with the phone and peel it off and it will go to the right place. But usually I mess things up and I have to buy do at least and it gets more expensive than using glue. So I use glue to glue up the phones. Now we'll plug in back the proximity sensor and the display and the last, the battery. Remember, battery always last. The phone is working again, everything is fine. Then we'll put the brackets back on. Remember to put the correct screws in the correct places. There were a few to be uh, different sizes of those, different lengths. It may break, may not, but remember, put them in place where you can find the correct order and put them back in the same way that you took it off. Then it will be all fine. The last bracket on. These brackets are there to keep the connectors that they don't get loose or detached while the phone is being used. Then we'll take the glue. Uh, I use CP0001 glue. This is supposed to be a new and improved version of the old glue that I used, the P7000. And I don't know, it said on the website this is better, so let's try it. I put some clamps there after the gluing up so it, it will stay together better. And then there's only left to put those two screws to the next to the charging board and the phone is ready. Remember, you can always be like the shopkeeper and buy a new one or you can fix up your old and still use your old. Thank you very much.